Hello everyone, this is James Bradford, Blue Diamond and Kayani, and uh, you know, I just want to bring a special video to everybody that really changed my perspective, it changed my thinking, and just know whenever your thinking change, your life will change with it, and this video is called The Butterfly Effect by Andy Andrews. Uh, you know, I got a, uh, the honor to really see him in person live, talk about The Butterfly Effect, and this video, you'll really, it's a nine minute video, you'll understand really what it talks about, but it talks about how every decision we make, makes a dramatic difference, either good or bad. And, you know, with our company and the product that we have that's actually saving people's lives right now, you know, I mean, it's we can't make health claims, but, you know, the, the testimonials speak for themselves. And, and I want you guys to know that every step you take in this company, that, that you know, every decision you make could, could really affect someone's lives. So don't, don't take no for an answer. Let's keep sharing the product because everybody knows someone we don't know, and the butterfly effect will kick in and we can save more lives together. So enjoy the video, and I hope it changes your life like it did mine. Thanks a lot. You heard of the butterfly effect? The butterfly effect was a doctoral thesis written in 1963 by Edward Lorenz and it was, it was presented to the New York Academy of Sciences and laughed out of the place. It's crazy. The butterfly effect stated that a butterfly could flap its wings on one side of the world and set molecules of air in motion that moved other molecules of air that would eventually move other molecules of air that could eventually create a hurricane on the other side of the planet. The butterfly effect. It was nuts. But it was interesting. And because it was so interesting, it hung around forever in, in urban legend and movies and books until finally, physics professors in the mid-90s proved the butterfly effect was accurate and viable, and it worked every time. And not just with butterflies either. It worked with any form of moving matter, including people. They gave it the status of a law. Just like the law of gravity, the butterfly effect is now known as the law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions. And it works every time. See, Chamberlain is a human example of the butterfly effect. One guy who made one move 140 years ago whose effect still ripples through our lives today. And you are no less an example of the butterfly effect than Chamberlain was. Everything you do matters. Every move you make, every action you take matters not just for you or your family or your hometown. Everything you do matters to all of us and forever. I was in a hotel room a couple of years ago this was before Peter Jennings died, and, and I was ironing the, the left sleeve of a white shirt and about to go down and talk to a group of people, and the TV was kind of halfway, to me, halfway on. And, and he was, Peter Jennings was doing that, uh, that person of the week thing, that ABC News, they still do it. but. But he was doing the person of the week where they highlight somebody and tell about what they... And while I'm kind of halfway paying attention, I hear him say, and so the person of the week for, and he gives the date, he said, is Norman Borlaug. I mean, when he said Norman Borlaug, I put the iron down. I ran in front of the TV set. My jaw was around my knees. Norman Borlaug, I didn't know the dude was still alive. I knew who he was. I, you know, I had written a book called The Lost Choice that, we, that tells the, the, the proof about how much a life matters. And, and I'd wrapped a story around it. And I'd done some research and I'd found out about Norman. I had like two paragraphs in the book about Norman Borlaug. I knew who he was. They, and they had calculated that, that his work, hybridizing corn and wheat for arid climates, his work... Through the years, the plains of Siberia, the Dust Bowl of Western Africa, our own desert southwest, south and central America, that his work, hybridizing corn and wheat for arid climates, had saved from famine the lives of over two billion people. The guy saved two billion lives. And for that, he was person of the week. <laughs> It kind of aggravated me because I, I remember thinking, it's not Norman Borlaug. I was talking to the TV, it's not Norman Borlaug that did it. It was a guy named Henry Wallace. 
Henry Wallace was Vice President of the United States under Roosevelt. And a lot of people think, wait, wait a minute, I thought Truman was Vice President under Roosevelt. Well, that's true. But remember, Roosevelt served four terms. He had three different Vice Presidents, and the middle one was the former Secretary of Agriculture, a man named Henry Wallace, who, while he was Vice President of the United States, used the power of that office to create a station in Mexico whose sole purpose was to hybridize corn and wheat for arid climates. And he hired a young man named Norman Borlaug to, to run it. And it was Norman Borlaug who, who won the Nobel Prize, and it was Norman Borlaug who got Person of the Week. But when you think about it, it was Henry Wallace who saved the two billion people, wasn't it? Really? Unless maybe it was George Washington Carver. You remember Carver, don't you? The peanut stuff? Here's, here's one thing people don't know about Carver, is when he was 19 years old and a student at Iowa State University, he had a dairy sciences professor who on Saturday and Sunday afternoons would allow his six-year-old little boy to go on botanical expeditions with this brilliant student. And it was George Washington Carver that took this little six-year-old boy and pointed his life in a direction. It was George Washington Carver that took this six-year-old Henry Wallace and put a, a vision in his life about plants and what they could do for humanity. It's, it's amazing to think about it. Isn't it George Washington Carver flapping those butterfly wings with the peanut stuff? 266 things he developed from the peanut that we still use today. He flapped his butterfly wings with the sweet potato. 88 things he developed from the sweet potato that we still use today. And while nobody was even looking, he just flapped his butterfly wings a couple of times with a little six-year-old boy and just happened to save the lives of two billion people and counting. So when you think about it, maybe it was Carver that should have been person of the week. Unless it would have been the farmer from Diamond, Missouri. A man named Moses had a wife named Susan they lived in a slave state, but they didn't believe in slavery. Well, this was a problem for these psychopaths like Quantrill's raiders who came through farms and villages at night, destroying and killing. And one January night, Quantrill's raiders came through Moses and Susan's farm, and they burned the barn, and they shot several people, and they drug off a lady named Mary Washington who refused to let go of her infant baby, George. Now, Mary Washington was Susan's best friend. And because of that relationship, Moses sent word out immediately and a messenger here and a message here trying to, to create a meeting with Quantrill's raiders and two days later he had it. And he took a black horse in the evening time and then went several hours north to a crossroads in Kansas to be there at the appointed time meeting four of Quantrill's raiders who showed up on horseback carrying torches with the flower sacks over their heads, with the eye holes cut out. And there Moses traded the last horse he had, ha had left on his farm for what they threw him in a burlap bag. And as he caught it and they thundered off, he went to the ground and there in that cold darkness with that white breath billowing out, he pulled out of that burlap sack a cold, naked, almost dead infant baby boy and he jerked open his jacket and his shirts and he put that baby in next to his skin and covered the child up and he walked that baby out talking to him promising him that he would raise him as his own telling him he would educate him to honor his mother who they knew was already dead and that was the night he told that baby he would give him his name. And that is how Moses and Susan Carver came to raise that little baby George Washington. So when you think about it, maybe it was the farmer from Diamond, Missouri that saved the two billion people. Unless... <laughs> Unless. And hey, you guys know we, we could do this all night. How far back could we go? I mean, really, how far back could we go to show whose move, at what time, at what point in history, how far back could we go to, to show who it really was who saved the two billion people? A number that continues to increase while we sit here. How far back could we go? 
And how far forward could we go in your life? How far forward could we go to show the lives that you'll touch? I mean, there, there are generations yet unborn whose very lives will be shaped and shifted by what you do tomorrow and the next day and the next and the next and the next because everything you do matters. Every move you make, every action you take, not just for you, not just for your family, not just for your hometown, everything you do matters to all of us and forever.